I have got a prophetic word from the Lord, a fresh word that he has been speaking to me for a couple hours. It's been unfolding. This is not something I have taken notes on, but it is ripe in my spirit. And um, so I believe that the Lord is going to move in a powerful way through this word to bless some people tonight. I'm going to pray for a moment while some people hop on. You guys need to share this. This is a fresh, powerful Prophetic release right now, word from God uh, for his people. I'm excited about it. <laughs> I'm excited about it. This is going to stir up some people's faith. <clears throat> Lord God, we just uh, invite you into this time. Lord, I ask that you would speak your heart, your mind, your words, the rhema word that you have for your people tonight through me. Lord, I thank you for anointing me to give this word. I thank you for, um, I, just, I just thank you for the trust, for revealing your mysteries to us, Lord. I thank you, God, for your love for us. I thank you, God, that, that you are, are so alive and active in our lives. And there is so much life force and energy and light that comes out from your being that flows through us, Lord, and we um, want to stir ourselves up in our most, most holy faith. And Lord, I pray that this word would go forth and that the people that it is for, that they, that they acknowledge that, if it's for them, if it bears witness with their spirit, this word is for me, that they would acknowledge it, that they wouldn't, um, that they wouldn't forget it, that they would let it go down deep and, 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 into their heart, into their soul, encouraging their faith and having them rise up in their faith and receive the word by faith into their lives, Lord, so that it can manifest. And that, Lord, I pray against the enemy trying to come in and steal this word before the full manifestation in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. So I, there's like three or four things that I'm going to, to prophesy that the Lord has put on my heart. And it's kind of unfolded <clears throat> this evening through some of the things that he's doing in my life, which he does that prophetically. He'll do something in my life and then speak, not just a parable for me, but he'll say, this is something I want you to prophesy. And the first thing that he wanted me to say is that there is a boldness booster that he is releasing to you guys tonight. By my words, by your faith, there is a boldness booster. He is boosting your boldness. And if you've been following me, this is a, a, a month of expansion. And so for many people, in order for this expansion to come, there is a spiritual, mental, emotional, financial, boldness a boldness that needs to come where it's an and it's an, a boldness in your faith to believe boldly what the lord has spoken to you and act upon it boldly and i think this is the the first thing that he wanted me to say so receive that by faith there is a spirit of boldness <clears throat> and there's also a boldness in your stand for righteousness there is a boldness with family members where you have been timid intimidated before. There is a boldness in relationships where you have been um, unsure of yourself before. There is a boost of boldness that's coming for God's purposes to be accomplished. Um, there's a scripture, God has not given us a spirit of fear. It's, it's translated timidity in some versions, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So that fear or timidity that that holds you back from being making a bold stand, making a bold statement, making a bold purchase, making a bold investment, making a bold decision, making a bold bold boundaries <clears throat> or an, a bold expansion of boundaries, which is going to be happening a lot this month. A boldness expansion. If you remember the word that I spoke, uh, the the prayer of Jabez, stretch out your tent pegs, was a scripture that I said that night. There's a boldness to that, to 
to stretching out your tent pegs and saying, this is where God is going to expand my territory. You, you're setting your stakes down there. It's requiring boldness. And so God is releasing boldness <clears throat> in the name of Jesus. The next thing he spoke is he is going to pay back. It wasn't double for your trouble. Lord, give me the words that you gave me. Um, he is going to make the wrongs more than right. That's how he said it. Tell them I'm going to make the wrongs more than right. More than right. Not just a balancing of the scales where there's justice, but where there has been injustice and where you have stood firm in faith and, and go ahead and apply your faith to this. If, if you're not there, like if you've been wavering and you've been, you have made some bold decisions or you have stepped out in faith in some area or there is injustice and you are looking at it and you're refusing to get bitter. The Lord's saying he's not just going to make it right. He is going to make it more than right. He's a God of above and beyond. Above and beyond. <clears throat> I am standing in faith with this word for my own life. And I will report back to you. And um, I'm going to give you some of the examples and some of the ways the Lord just started speaking this word to me. I ordered... Um, some little light bulbs are, we have these very strange lights in this house that take a specific kind of light bulb and I've gotten them two different places or two different times and they didn't fit. They weren't the right ones, the Home Depot. And so I finally ordered them offline and I ordered two packs of, um, of six and they're expensive, like $80. And so today they come in the mail and I'm like, yay. And there was just two. And so I'm like, you know, okay, they just got it wrong because it's two in the, you know, quantity, but it's two boxes of six. And so I called them like, they'll make this right, I'm sure. But I said, I'm going to ask them to just send the, you know, the two boxes on. And, and she said, do you want me to just add another box? And I was like, she sent, she is sending, instead of getting 12 lights, I have 20 so the Lord was saying that's more that is more than he he is not just righting the wrongs he's making them more than right he's making them more than right and he just spoke because I knew I was going to be getting on here and prophesying tonight and we paid somebody to do yard work which was really hard for me to do I've just never been in a financial place to pay anybody to do yard work but it really needed to be done. There, there's no way either one of us had the time to do it. And then somebody in the glory tribe actually prophesied on their wall when I was looking for workers that day and kind of back and forth. Ah, um, you need to, don't hoard. There's somebody who's reading this. I feel like the Lord is speaking this to me. And I'm sharing this because it's prophetic for you guys. Pick what you can. Pick what you need out of it. And she said, um, you need to release that money to do the work around the house because there's somebody who needs that money. It's for them as well. And the Lord's wanting you to go ahead and do that for yourself. And I was like, okay. So I hired somebody and was, and were pretty unhappy with the, <laughs> the way that they did their, our yard. They poured dirt in it that's got rocks and gravel and like they dusted our yard when they were supposed to even it out. And... Um, and so the Lord spoke this to me and I'm going to come back and I'm going to give you the answer to this. God making this more than right for us, more than right for us, more than right for the, for us. And I, I messaged him and I'm like, this is really a terrible job. I didn't think I would hear back from him. I was encouraged, said us of what he did good. And then I said, and then this part is really bad. And I didn't think I would hear back from him. And he's like, I'm going to go get the most expensive kind of soil. I'm going to make this right. And so I'm excited to see. I believe that it's going to be more, be made more than right. More than right. <laughs> this situation. And there, this is just a small thing. It might be in a marriage relationship where you have sunk a lot of time and love and prayers and effort 
and you don't seem to be getting it's not being made right you don't feel like it's being made right the Lord is saying he is making it more than right I have seen this happen in my own life time and time again and it happens if you are a sower and reaper but this is a miraculous thing this is a miraculous thing this is a quick thing this is a thing that God when he says praise him in all circumstances because he's working everything for good in his glory there's some things that people have went through that are really not cool really unjust really hurtful really hard for a long season and there's a miraculous move of God through this word to make it more than right grab it by faith and say okay I'm ready to see the fullness of this I'm ready to see this unfold. I'm ready to see what you're going to do, God, to make this more than right. So that you can see, even not in the sweet by and by, but that you can see, I get it now. I get why this had to happen this way. Because if it didn't happen this way, then these things wouldn't have come to pass. These things wouldn't come to pass. And I'm just remembering. So the Lord was telling me, I said, Lord, I need some scripture. I, you know, I don't like to just get on and talk and prophesy without some scripture that he's wanting to, you know, help give us something to meditate on from the scripture. And and he was telling me, talk about the, the Shunammite woman. And Elisha was a prophet in the Old Testament. And um, there was a woman, a Shunammite woman. She was from whatever, <laughs> I don't know what the name of the town is, Shuman. And so that's why they call her the Shunammite woman because it doesn't tell her name. And Elisha would travel around. And she, they were fairly wealthy. And so she said to her husband, I'm going to make him a room so he has somewhere to stay when he's traveling. So she put a room upstairs in the house, made it up for him. So whenever he come by, he could stay there for free. And, you know, just honored the prophet. And, you know, you might be honoring God in this situation, honoring God in this circumstance, doing best to honor the Lord with your life. And then these things hit you and these things come and you're like, what in the world? And so Elisha asked his servant, what, you know, what can I do for her? What is it that she needs? And I said, she doesn't have any kids and her husband's kind of old. So she had wanted a child. So he told her this time next year, you are going to have a son. And she was Yes. And so that time next year, she had a child and, and some time went by. The child had grown a bit and uh, her, her son died and she put her son in the upper room in Elisha's bed and shut the door and she took off running to where she knew Elisha was, which was a, quite a distance away. And so she's running. He sees her coming and when he sees her come running, he knows something is up. So he tells the servant, get a staff, get, let's get things going and they meet her she says what in the world did you do to me you know do you ever think that with god you know like he gives you some blessing or something that you get excited about and you think oh you know i'm like okay god wanted me to get my lawn done and and they like now my we had moss we were trying to get the moss up and put some grass on <laughs> and then he just dumps like this gravelly dirt in our yard that it just looks like a mud puddle now uh, you know, you have that situation where you thought you were getting a blessing. You thought God was coming through for you and you were doing something like you're yet. And then it's like, what in the world just happened? <laughs> you know, or on a bigger scale, you know, on a bigger scale. I mean, sometimes at the beginning of a marriage or something like that, that you know you got married, God told you to marry this person. You go through some stuff that you begin to wonder, like, is this the blessing, you know? And the Lord is saying, he is making things more than right. You've got to trust him and keep moving forward because there's a miracle coming. So she's like, why did you even give me this child if you're just going to die? I mean, because at that point, he's dead. But she had some mustard seed of faith or she wouldn't have been running looking for the prophet, you know. And so he, he goes back there. He shuts the door behind him. He lays down on the boys, breathing, praying. And uh, um, I, I think it, here, let me go ahead and read you this part. Because this is cool. It's in 2 Kings 4. She said, did I ask you for a son, my Lord? She said, didn't I tell you don't raise my hopes? And Elisha said to Gehazi, take your cloak in your belt, take my staff in your hand and run. And don't talk to anyone if you meet them. And if anyone greets you, don't answer. Lay my staff on the boy's face. I guess he's older, so he's running. 
He, uh, but the child's mother said, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So she got up and, and he followed her. So Gazi went, laid the staff on the boy's face, Gehazi, um, and, but there was no sound or response. So Gehazi went back to meet Elisha and told him the boy has not awakened. And when Elijah reached the house, there was the boy lying dead on the couch. And he went in, shut the door on the two of them and prayed to the Lord. Then he got on the bed, lay upon the boy, mouth to mouth, eyes to eyes, hands to hand. This is miracle. This is the verse that the Lord is wanting you to hold on to. And whatever situation he's speaking to you about, that he's going to make it more than right. And it is going to take a miracle to do it. Um, as he stretched himself out upon him, the boy's body grew warm. Elisha turned away and walked back and forth in the room and then got, got on the bed and stretched out up, upon him one more time. And then the boy sneezed seven times, which is the completion, and opened his eyes. And Elisha summoned Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite. And he did. When she came, he said, Take your son. She came in and fouled his feet, bowed to the ground. Then she took her son and went out. And so that's not even the end of the story. So then... There is a famine in the land. And so, you know, this woman, she honored the prophet. She, she, she showed honor to God. And so she got her promise. You know, then this terrible tragedy happened. It was restored back to her. And then there are things that are happening in life that are hitting things on a big scale. I mean, the, the economy can tank and the businesses around you are going down and your business might be you know, feeling like it's hitting the ground and the Lord's saying, no, I'm going to bring restoration. I'm going to give you an idea. There's going to be a miracle resurrection because you're honoring me and I'm going to resurrect that thing. It doesn't matter what other people are going through around you or what would seem like it's going to hit you because it's happening to the people around you. God got you covered and he is going to do, and he is going to make things more than, uh, more than right. So, Elijah goes to the woman and tells her, you need to, you need to go out of the country. There's a famine for seven years. And so she leaves the country. Well, while she's gone, she, uh, somebody takes over her property. That's what they usually do, you know, when something like that happens. But so she goes in to inquire of the king to try to get her property back, which it wasn't, it was going to take a miracle to get it back. You know, I mean, there might be somebody who's praying for the restoration of their marriage. Feels like somebody else has moved in on it. This is a word for you. And so she goes into the king and she says, to, you know, to get her land back. And the king was right then talking to Gehazi. I believe it was. This is sec it should be Second Kings 8, 1. Um, and so he's talking to Elijah's servant. He's like, tell me some stories about the miracles uh, that Elijah has done. And he said, well, let me tell you about the Shunammite woman and her son. So he's telling him the story and the king's like, this is cool. And then right then, there's that woman at the right time, at the right time, God's going to give you favor with the right people. It's going to be miraculously aligned to release to you what God has for you. What God has for you is going to be released to you and you are going to be positioned at the right time in the right place with the right people for it to be released. And so, Jesus, Jesus. So the king, you know, is talking to her and then he's like, yeah, give her all of her stuff back. You know, give her all the land, give her all the crops. It's all hers. And so what has been taken is restored to her. So... And, what has been taken, and, I, and I'm seeing that, I'm hearing that in this verse. There's some people who have had something promise them, a promise of God that has slipped out of their fingers, or a promise of God that seems to have turned to dust, or a promise of God that that came and didn't, it wasn't fully fulfilled, or didn't happen the way you, you know, had really, the child died. The land was in famine and she had to leave her home. So God is bringing restoration. He is restoring. I ordered 12 bulbs. I got two. <laughs> and it's interesting that they're light bulbs because this is symbolic in and of itself. And, and, and the lady, I just was, I was hoping that for my trouble, I would just get sent the two 12-pack. 
packs and then I would have 14 bulbs but she said like no no let me tell you she don't she didn't only restore to me what was lost I got the two bulbs free she added a box and then she gave me 50% off the entire order on top of that she completely took back what I she you know she canceled the other order and made a new order giving me three boxes for two boxes at half off and that was a prophetic parable for this prophetic word of what God is going to do for you I, I believe it with all my heart I release it it's the word of the Lord receive it by faith pray into it praise God for it don't stress about it don't stress about it. It'll be the right time at the right place, just like the lady. You know, the Lord is good. The miracles are coming. He's boosting boldness, and he has given us, um, he is restoring. He's bringing restoration. He's making things more than right. You guys share this. Share it. Invite some people to listen to it. And I love you guys, and I will be, uh, I having my my uh, having a, a prophetic meeting here in Herndon, Virginia tomorrow night if you happen to be in the area it's at seven o'clock at uh, 503 Carlisle Drive in suite 275 so bless you I bless you I release a gift of faith a gift of boldness spiritual boldness financial boldness boldness in decisions boldness emotionally boldness with boundaries Boldness for asking for what you need. Boldness for believing that you will receive the things that you need from a loving God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus.